Hello and welcome to the second practice video for the Electronics for Mechanical Engineering module here at Singapore Polytechnic. I'm Jolyon Kaplan and you can just reach me on these number and email address uh, just in case you have any inquiries or you'd like some more videos like this. This video will look at the work we've been doing in the second term and this is mainly featuring the flip-flops and if you have time we'll go on to other things as well like counters and shift registers. For now let's try and explain the flip-flops. This is normally quite difficult for people to understand but hopefully with the, answer, uh, the application that we have here, a little example, you'll understand much more about what a flip-flop is and why we use the different types. Now here we have a simulation for a set of traffic lights which are used normally at the temporary roadworks which we have all over the place in Singapore. And if you know the situation, you have maybe just one lane of the road open and there's some poor guys having to work all day in the hot sun with stop go boards and the other end is a go stop board I suppose and you have to just flip the board to go or stop depending on whether there are cars or not. It just gives the cars their turn to go. Now what we can do here is simulate this and we're going to be using this IC over here which is the 74112, a JK flip-flop in fact and this will be simulating seeing whether we have cars or not at each end of the roadworks and then driving the signs. So in fact with just this one chip we could in fact give those two poor guys a break and they can do something exciting like digging the road instead. Anyway, let's see how it goes. Well, the IC is wired up in the normal way and you should already know about how this trainer works. So we have the IC is wired up to the plus five and the ground supplies. You must remember to put supply on. And the wiring is shown on this little ticket down here, if you can just about see it. I'll be zooming in on that a bit later. But just for now, you'll see it's wired up and I've got everything wired up. I've got the clock, which is wired up over here with a bright orange wire. And that's going to be this button B I'm pressing every time I clock. And I'm going to have my synchronous inputs, which are J and K. This is going to be like my traffic detector. So really, if you have cars on the left-hand side, boom, 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 coming up, waiting to go, then we set J as 1. No cars on the other side, so we'll set K as 0. And then it's time to change the boards if necessary so you press the clock boom and that means now that it's go for the side of the car and stop for anything on the other side which means this car can go boom 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 through to the other side and out so that's very happy and later on when another car comes on up and it's time to check Okay, are the lights in the right place? Okay, say 30 seconds later, we say, all right, there's a car on this side, Just still keep the switches there, okay, it's all right. We press the clock again, lights do not change because this is still correct, so the car can go through. Boom, boom, boom. Then later on, a car comes in the other direction. Here we go. Ah, it has to wait now because there's a stop sign on this side. So stop is this LED and the go LED is off. Alright, now it's time to check. So the guys say, ah, right, I've got a car now on the right hand side. So I set K to 1. And I've got uh, no car on the other side, says the other guy. So that's it. We could actually have some kind of car detectors just laying out there. We don't need to have anyone to look. So therefore, if you have a car detected here, it would be a logic 1 on the K and if there's no car on this side there would be a logic 0 on the J. Okay, now it's time to check. 
So you press the clock. Ah, now it changes because the car's been detected on the right hand side. It says go, the other side says stop. So now the car can boom, 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 through to the other side and out. Fantastic. Now, what happens to the situation when we have, uh oh, cars waiting at both sides? All right. Uh, or there's continual cars on both sides. You can't just keep the lights in one direction, that would not be fair. So what we can do is now just use this other feature of the JK flip-flop where we detect cars on both sides. So J is 1 and K is 1. Now it's very fair because every time we press the clock the balls change. So what ball stop now becomes go, what balls go becomes stop. And the next 30 seconds it changes. And the next 30 seconds it changes. As long as you still have the cars on both sides, then uh, no problem. Every 30 seconds or whatever they decide, it's very fair because we can take turns for the cars, which is very nice. Now, if, say, example later on, it's back to normal where we've got uh, OK cards on one side, press the clock. Uh, in this case, set the J and the K. K now is zero because there's no car on this side. Press the clock. Nothing happens. You expected that, right? Because it still said go. All right, that's good. So it goes through to the other side. Now, here we've got a car that's being stopped. It's waiting for the lights. And, OK, so just to go through again. OK, now it's one on this side and zero on the left-hand side. Press the clock. OK, that's superb. So now this car is allowed to go. But suddenly, suddenly, along comes the President of Singapore in his VIP car. Now, we can't let the President wait, can we? Immediately, this President is seen. We have to immediately change the lights to go, don't we? Because you always do that for President Mayo, especially he's got the Singapore flag flying. So that means now we have to press the set switch. This is active low, so say low, and as soon as you press that, immediately it's go. That's okay, sir. That's right, you carry on. We don't want to stop you. And uh, do you like our roadworks? Yeah, and it goes on through. So it means that even though the car was on the right hand side waiting to go, he had to wait because the president had come along. And we're not even waiting for a clock pulse. It's, I didn't even have to press the clock switch. As soon as I press the set, immediately it goes. And it's the same the way, uh, same in the other direction. Um, and by the way, when I reset the set, it doesn't do anything, okay? You just momentarily dab. Now, let's say, for example, later the president's coming the other way. <laughs> we just now have to activate the other lights and it's just quick dab, as quick as possible it could be. Ding, ding. As soon as you press that clear, now this side is go. And you don't have to keep it down, it's just, just a dab, bing, very, very quickly. Don't need to wait for the clock, immediately it remembers and it stays that way. And then later on, normal operation, okay, this car can go on through. Later on, you get another car coming up to go the other way. All right, you get the idea by now. It has to stop. Now we just go and check. Okay, no cars on the right-hand side, so that's zero. J is one, because the car's waiting. We clock, and now the lights say go for this car. and go to the other side. I hope that's clear for you. That's the operation of the JK flip-flop. Now we can improve this even more. Um, so if at the moment we've got two men operating the switches and one can see on one side and one can see on the other side, what happens if one guy is on, on MC? Then we use the D-type flip-flop and I've got one also set up for you. So now we have a different setup now with the 7474 D-type flip-flop. It looks much the same. But there is an important difference. Instead of having two inputs to see whether we've got cars coming in one direction or the other, what we have now is just one input, D, just to show whether the cars are actually on this side or the other side. 
So here we go. Let's quickly see the operation of this. So let's switch on. And we see now that it just happens to be saying go on the left hand side. And the operation is that we have D as up, which is 1. We press the clock. There we are. It just go on the left hand side. If D is low, nothing happens until you press the clock. And that means now low, which means in this case stop on the left hand side. And on the right hand side is the opposite. So let's go. I've wired it in reverse for the other side. So let's see how it goes. Up comes the car on the left hand side. It's got to wait. Why? Because the stop sign is on. Then only one person needs now to check the traffic. As long as he's on a ladder somewhere in the middle of the road works, he can look at both sides and has a controller to either set for left or right. So down is right, you can think of. Up is left with this data switch. So what we have now is, oh, this is okay. There's a car on the left-hand side. Switch the switch up. And time to change the lights now with the clock and this car can now go and any other cars have to stop so you have another car coming along a bit later up the left hand side, ah it's got to stop now so what do we do ah right the guy says ah now we've got a car on the other side change the state of D now make D low because now it's for the right hand side and it's time to change the lights now and now the car can go through to the other side just like that and just like before we can also cater for VIPs it's, this time it's the Prime Minister coming along uh oh there's a stop sign here now although the guy here could he could actually yes he could activate the D to 1 and press the clock immediately he could just simply just press set and that will just immediately without waiting for a clock just set the lights so that the VIP, our Prime Minister, can go by. Hi, Mr. Prime Minister. Hope you like the roadworks as well. And he can go on by. And it's the same with the other side. If you have set, back off, and then clear. Just quickly. You can just dab it. Bing. And back up again. Then you set the lights in the other direction. Just like that. Very easy. So that's the operation of the D-type flip-flop. Now, the other thing that you could do with the... JK flip-flop was have this toggle mode, the T mode, where if you have, say, in this case, cars on both sides, and there's a continual stream of traffic from both sides, it's Russia, uh, coming home from lectures or whatever it is, what we need to do is be fair that every time we press the clock, we want to change over. Now, one way you could do it, of course, is just change the state of the date, data, input, D input, press the clock, change the state, press the clock, change the state, press the clock, and then it's like that. Now, you see what I'm doing with a D, I'm just going up every time, down every time, up every time, down every time. Now, I don't have to do that. I can let this circuit do it for me, because all I have to do really is disconnect a wire from the not Q output, the not Q is pin 6, so let's have a a wire going to pin 6. So what we do is we stick it in there. And now let's use that for our data instead. So in fact, let's just take out from our data switch. And what we'll do is we'll put that into pin 2, which is the data input. Okay. And now what's going to happen is that every time I clock hopefully we should see and let's just put a copy of the data onto an LED in the, in the middle there so every time I clock it switches so I don't have to keep switching data or whatever it's all automatic now we're letting the IC do its own work and the middle LED is just showing what the data is every time it's different Hope that's clear for you.
That's how the JK and the D-type flip-flops work. And the main difference between JK and D-type is that the JK has two inputs a set and the D-type has just one. Now, you might say, well, can't we just design circuits so we can just use one type of flip-flop? Yes, we can. But where the JK is very, very useful, and let's give you another example here, is, say for example, you have a burglar alarm system. You have a lot of circuits which are all there to detect burglars. And the burglars uh, detection systems like doors and windows and pressure pads and whatever, all those things are designed to set the alarm off. They're not designed to stop the alarm. So all those circuits could go to the J input. And when the J input gets set and then as the checking time comes along, is it time to check? Yes, press the clock. Ah, then you can say, ah, there's a burglar, we set the alarm off. And none of those circuits can set the alarm to be stopped. So in fact, with this J input, I have J as 1, I clock, the alarm goes off. But even if the burglar says, oh, oh I've just uh, set off a switch and goes back to 0, every time I clock, the alarm is still on. There's no way, unless you do something else, that we can stop the alarm if it's a burglar alarm. But there could be some other circuits in our system which are designed to reset the alarm. And these could be special circuits going to the police station, could be a special lock or something like that. So in that case, what we do is we just use the circuit connected to K, and then when that's done, we press the clock, ah, now the alarm is stopped. So really the JK flip-flop is very useful for when you've got one set of circuitry doing one thing, another set of circuitry doing another thing, and those two are separate. But if you have a kind of system where you have one circuit which can decide to go or decide to stop, and it's got one output, one or zero, the D-type flip-flop is the thing to use. So, that's it for now. I think uh, that's enough for you to get on with. And, uh, you can do counters and stuff in another video. Um, so, in the meantime, hopefully you can understand. Just replay bits that you didn't understand. And then, uh, you can always look at your book and look up the experiments and flip-flops, counters and so on. Uh, things you can try, if you do have a chance to play, is uh, just think of other applications for these circuits. And if you have a rush of blood, you can even set up a, a ripple counter with a 74LS93 and uh, one thing that is quite fun is to connect the outputs via a suitable amplifier to a loud speaker and then you can actually hear different musical notes if you put an audio input into the clock. Now does that sound cheap? Well I'll wait till my next video. <laughs> okay, good luck in your studies, good luck in your lab tests.